How are you? Hi, welcome to Shrink Wrapped. I'm Allison Colorosi here with Dr. David Colorosi. I'm great. I have a lot. First of all, well, what's the latest with you? How are you? you we're back. You're done with your travels. Yeah. We survived. Yeah, but I already feel stressed because it's Lena's birthday party this weekend and it got bigger than I thought. And it's at the house and we haven't really moved into our house yet. Which is true, by the way, for every kid's birthday party that you put on. I feel like they always go, they get too big. They get big and I'm cooking. I wish I just decided to cater it instead of cook. But I already went down one path, so I couldn't go back. And I have to make a cake. You have to make a Beyblade cake. You have to dress up like ninjas. There's a lot Do going on. Are, are we supposed to outfit everybody in ninja outfits? No. Who's dre- Why are we dressed just our families to be ninjas? Lena requested it for his birthday. Just the four of us will be in ninja outfits. And we're always the only ones dressed up. Remember last year we had to wear superheroes? I did put on the invite that you could dress like a ninja if you wanted to. I saw on your Amazon, like in the in the cart, you had like twenty five headband, ninja headband. No, just two, one for each of us. Was I got rid of that out of the cart? Were we? Was that? Did you purchase that? I thought I did. You got rid of my ninja headband. And there was like 12, 12 of them in the cart, and I thought, oh, she just didn't want it because I thought, I, whatever. I yes, they weren't bringing me joy. By the way, Maria Kondo has gone back on that. I think that is hilarious. That is, uh, that should be a bigger deal. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, if you listen to Maria, Maria Kondo, Marie Kondo, mm-hmm. is it? Marie Kondo. Mm-hmm. And she's like, if anything doesn't bring you joy, you get out of your house, you clean up. Then she has kids and she's like, yeah, life's a disaster. Good luck. <laughs> Um, yeah. So the amount of Beyblades that we have is crazy and all the little parts that go with them. But, um, but today's a very special day because we were supposed to record this yesterday, but we're recording it today called Determination Day. Oh. Um, it's Gretchen Rubin did it on the 28th and I also wanted to do it. And so, um, I thought it would be a good day to have a check-in. Okay. When Gretchen... I know that we're fans of Gretchen Rubin, but I heard a podcast where Gretchen Rubin did like for her New Year's resolution and she went all 23 of her resolutions. We did it too. And then her partner also did all 23. We did that too. I wanted to drive off a cliff listening to it. But we did it. I Because my wife drives things around here. Can I tell you that our friend reached out to me because you know how for a while I was making all of our friends write down their 23? Yeah. She asked me if I still had her list and she would like a picture of it. So maybe you're wrong about the 23 thing. So hold on. Somebody called you and said, hey, at dinner, and I wrote down that list. I really want it. Yeah. Okay, but I, all right. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's, let's do it. Okay. Let's do like a little check-in about your like intention for the year. Okay. And, th- okay. And then I have a surprise This to this show. I've got a new format for the show. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah, but let's do your, so where are you at on your? Helping future Allison? Yeah. I feel like I'm really knocking at it out of the park. <laughs> this is why she wanted to do determination day. No, for that, I mean, except for like a couple things that I could have helped myself out. I always, like today, after, before I went to the gym at 530 this morning, I went and got gas because I was out of gas and I really didn't want to get out of the car because it was like 28 degrees. Um. But I went and got gas because I knew if I did it, then like it would help me not have to deal with that later in the day. So taking two minutes to help myself for things I don't want to do has been really helpful. So yeah, globally, I think I'm doing a good job. I could do, I could, I could still do better. How are you doing? I think I'm knocking out of the park also. I'm going to great. I disagree. Oh, this is why you brought it up. This is like, you're like a little accountability system. Well, I scheduled with the dentist. I'm going tomorrow. I have pearly whites for all to see, first thing. I've been better about not eating bad at night. I, I kind of, what, what, do you, what does that look for? You were complaining about me buying too many Girl Scout cookies yesterday. 
Okay. I complain about it, but because you're making it harder for me to look out for myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's only, there's some research about like, you only have so much willpower. And by the end of the day, if I have to walk past. That they debunked, they debunked that research. They debunked it. They did? Yeah. I don't know. I, I heard about it. I feel like I heard about it on, um, I think Gretchen Rubin's podcast. And it's really about creating habits so you don't have to think about anything. What you should be doing. Okay. 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 First of all, Gretchen Rubin's a lawyer, right? She's not like it. She's not like she's a habit researcher now. What does that mean? Give me a break. Come on, don't right, crumb on her. Okay, fine. Okay. Right, we love Gretchen Rubin. <laughs> uh, anyway, you get fatigued to saying of showing restraint all day, and that like if it's like eleven o'clock at night and I'm working, and I walk past Thin Mints, I think like, I don't need that. And then I walk past again and it's, there's Samoa's there. Do you, I don't, do you really like restrain yourself all day from eating? Yes. What do you, yes, I do. And, and I'll tell you, here's the, here's the problem with the Girl Scout cookies is you <laughs> bought different kinds. So it's yeah. not just, if it was Thin Mints and Samoa's, I go like, I know what that is. But now there's like these, you have these toffee, there's like toffee chips inside of the plain ones. Those are delicious, aren't they? There were, well, I didn't know I had to try them out. And they're delicious. And you have another one that I haven't tried yet that is, it's like a, it's a, a cookie lined in brownie. Or, I mean, a, there's a brownie outside of a cookie. It's not, that one's not that good. I like how you can have it and you're still on your thing, but I'm not. I'm, I didn't, my thing wasn't to eat healthier. I didn't have that on my 23. I, think I feel like I have that in the bag. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I've been... I've been doing, I've been using uh, editors for YouTube so I get to sleep faster. That's looking out for future, David. Yeah. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Do we like the new, this is the, the makings of a new studio? David did that. Now, don't look too closely at the lines because <laughs> you'll see that David may, may have moved too quickly when painting, but you know, <laughs> the intention was good. Okay. Well, so I'm glad we're at determination day. Um, and I think in two months, I don't know if Gretchen Rubin is doing this, but I feel like in June, we should do a revisit on all 23 and see if we're, while we're halfway through the year, mm -hmm. like if we need to do any if, or if we've checked some off our 23. Okay. What do you think? Can we do that? Well, if Gretchen Rubin's doing it, I guess we need to. Yeah. Like Gretchen Rubin. I know, but... She has a new book, by the way, which I'm going to read. Okay, what is it? I can't remember. It's something with the five cents. I don't know. I, I can't remember what it's called. Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> okay, I have it's totally separate, but just so you you would like this. Forget the, the podcast. There's a book by Rick Rubin that I just bought on Audible. It's called like the, the creative way or being creative or something called. Uh, it is, I just started listening to it. It is absolutely fantastic. Hold on, I'm gonna, I'll give you the name. It's called, it's The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. You know who Rick Rubin is? No. Rick Rubin is the guy, he's a famous producer, doesn't play any instruments. He's the guy that did the, um, you know the song Walk This Way with Run DMC and Aerosmith? Walk this way, talk, okay. And there's the big, like the, the bass in the background. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's an innovator, exceptionally creative guy. Anyway, this is his book about his creative process. Um, in the first chapter he's talking about, which made me think of you, he believes that the universe is creative. He believes that the universe has ideas that it wants to express. And your job as a creative is to attend to those ideas mm -hmm. and be sensitive to them and recognize when you've got a thought or a unique idea and execute on it. Because he says, if you don't, somebody else will. Because the universe wants that idea expressed. So if you ever have a good idea and you sit on it, in the next year, you're likely to see somebody else do the thing that you were thinking of doing. And so his whole thing is that you should be empowered. Like if you have an idea, execute on it. Because otherwise it's going to go to somebody else. Hmm. But, right, so you're thinking of my... Yes. I've been starting... I feel like you have a lot of ideas. I feel like you have a lot of ideas, but... You're, you hesitate on execution. 
I think it's not you just should go for it. So I agree. You're gonna make the you had an excuse coming and then you stopped. No, I do agree. Like I am not good at um, compartmentalizing like my life so that I can do that. So like I feel very um, pulled, and I don't make the time, um, which is an excuse not making the time to execute it on it. But I did start one of my ideas baby steps but I've been tracking it so I've been tracking it like I track other things so I don't break the chain yeah that's good that's good and I'm gonna get like as I get more comfortable with I think I'll get better at it it's, it's like this right you have to yeah. make yourself do it yeah so I'm I but I am gonna make myself do it every day so you'll I hope um you start liking it because I only have five like followers single thing you Every, only five, there's only five. And I've liked five things. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but talk about the new format. Okay. The new format. So we talked last time about we want to listen, have listener questions. People asked about what well, we thought about Christ, uh, Christine Brown's dating and soulmates. Um, and then so then I checked Reddit and we're not yet, we're just going to surprise you out. We are not yet popular enough that we have a bustling feed. So I was on Reddit and I goes, well, are there other feeds that would be interesting? So there's a feed that is relationship advice. And so I thought it would be fun for, so I took a couple pictures of prompts on the relationship advice feed on Reddit. I think we should react to that. Okay. 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 So I've got a couple. One. Is there one that you can start that ease that's normal? normal. Like eases us into a racial relationship advice or are you going to like. Hardcore, knowing you immediately. You mean directly to not safe for work? Yeah. I got one of those. Okay. Let's go. I'll do it. I can do one that is more appropriate. Okay. And then we'll do the not safe for work one. Okay. Okay. Ready? I, a 22 year old female, overheard my boyfriend, 27 year old male's therapy session. He wants to keep the baby. Prom. That's the heading. Okay. We've known I was pregnant for about, for around two weeks. I'm approximately nine weeks pregnant. When I told him I was getting an abortion, he simply said, okay, and kissed me. My boyfriend has a therapy session. It must have been remote. Um, and I always leave the room when he does them. I nap a lot lately, as expected, and he did them, the therapy session, right outside the room yesterday. I woke up in the middle of one of his sessions, and I admit I eavesdropped. I was hearing my name, and he told his therapist that I was pregnant. He wanted to have the baby... But I didn't, and although he's supportive, he can't help but feel sad. I just laid in the same position until he was done, so he didn't think I heard. But I did, loud and clear. I just don't feel as confident in my decision anymore. I assume that he was on the same page as me. Now that I know he's not, it changes everything. Hearing him go on and on about it for 30 minutes. My appointment is in a couple of days, but I don't know if I can go through with it now. What should I do? Pop quiz, Hashrat, what do you think? Well, I just, it like speaks to the immaturity of their relationship that she did not have a conversation about it. She just assumed what somebody else was thinking, which seems like the term I get is self-drama, like a teenager. It's like if, I feel like if you were in your 20s, you would say like, hey, I'm pregnant. Like, what do you think? What is your expectation? You know, if you if you were really a partnership, so let's start there. Like, are they really a partnership? Um, Wait, hold on. You're thinking that they're not a partnership because... Like, she just made the decision in a silo, which is... And, and then is shocked when um, his... When, when they don't align. Yes. You know, like, I think that's interesting. Like, that's... That's very telling to me. But, like, we can't tell you whether or not you should keep your baby. Like, that's you. That's something that you have to really discuss with your partner and decide if it's the right decision for you, you know. I, I, that's, that's a hard one because, you know, you have to want a baby to, to have a baby. <laughs> They're a lot of work. You and I can tell you we're tired every day. So... But do you have a different... No, I was just... I think there's two things going on here. One is the appraisal of the relationship. 
and I agree, it feels very immature. Because you don't you didn't ask? I don't know if she didn't ask, but 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 part of me goes, okay, so if you're if you're the twenty the twenty seven year old guy in the relationship and get somebody pregnant and she says, I want to have an abortion, and I'm sh- I my guess would be he was trying to be helpful and supportive and you know, he probably thinks her body, her choice, so I'm gonna stay out of I'm gonna stay out of it. And then he silently grieves. Like I agree, I I agree that that's the wrong move for him because he's not being sincere about what he thinks, but I think well intentioned. So I I think you're right as far as like the the relationship is an immature relationship. But I don't know where I land on should she go through with the abortion. How would you? No, I don't. Like, how do we know? That is a, such a personal decision. You know. Would it change it for you though if? Because I guess the question for her, I guess maybe let's answer it this way. How would you help her? If it was a friend, how would you help her make the decision? I don't think I'm the right person to help her. I don't. I I don't know. I think it's a hard one. I mean, my... uh... I mean, that's something you discuss with your partner. They clearly, like, didn't have a conversation. And so I guess my, to help her have clarity about her feelings, I feel like number one, she should probably seek therapy, but also number two, you should discuss it with your partner, like have a sincere, real conversation about how each of you feel. So, you know, going into this, you know, um, and, and if you want this relationship longer term past, you know, this, this stage I think you need to get practice on having hard conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. I think, I think that the, on her end, she would benefit. The fact that his changing, his opinion is changing her opinion tells me that her opinion was, like, I think her opinion was driven in part by the assumption that no one would, that he he wouldn't offer support. And so now that that variable has changed, maybe now she does want to keep it. And I think she needs to think through that. And my guess would be he's probably not the right person to help her process that. Just based on what the relationship seems like, I would say she needs to go to therapy. I think I agree with you. She should go to therapy and talk through what it means and talk to her boyfriend. Yeah. That's a tough one. Okay, you want a less tough one, more provocative one? Yeah, that one that also was not a softball. This next one's a softball. And I'm going to use tamer language than they did. Okay. Uh, Should I consider my, she's a 29-year-old female, my boyfriend who's a 27-year-old male, masturbating at work a red flag, even after he said he wouldn't do it anymore? Is it still a red flag if he says he's not going to do it anymore? Before I begin, I am exhausted by our conversations around porn. Porn has been an issue in our relationship for almost a year now. First, he was doing it daily, and it affected our sex life. After chatting, he admitted that it was too much, and he said he would try not to do it for one month, and he couldn't stop. Then he said he wouldn't do it at work anymore. He appeared to be successful here. Then he reduced it to three times a week, which still sucked because I felt like we weren't having sex as often, and it seemed like he was just waiting for me to leave so he could masturbate. I'd come back from an errand for the gym, and... He would, and I would want to be intimate, but he had just masturbated. Things have been better, but I just found out he masturbated at work again. What do you all think? I used to be fine with porn, then I really hated it because he was choosing it over me regularly. Now I'm more neutral, but I find the need to do it at work pathetic. I'm also terrified that I'm going to end up with a porn addict. He doesn't think he's a porn addict, by the way. But if you read some of my older posts, you know that there's some tendencies there. So, Al, is that a red flag if your partner is masturbating at work? Yes. Yes. And I feel like that's an HR problem. And, like, is he going on, like, a company computer? Because someone else is watching you. They know every click you make. So that is weird. And also, I think he needs help. And also, if he's your boyfriend, like, maybe reconsider and go with someone else. He's got some 
He's my, got some stuff. This is a sock. Is this more of a sock? This is more what you're looking for with the relationship advice. I feel bad, but like, I want to be like really like diplomatic, but you know that I'm not. And I also am like, I just like, why put yourself in that situation? Like, if he's watching it, I feel like it's a Josh Duggar situation ready to happen. Like, he was watching porn on his work computer, and that's how he went to jail. Well, if you read the rest, I, I cut that post short. The rest of the post says that the reason why he says he needs to watch porn is because he has some uh, proclivities that she's not able to satisfy because of some physical limitations. And so he has to watch those to get himself aroused. So here's what, here's what, and so I think it's a, okay, if I have two thoughts, I think it's a, obviously it's a slam dunk that the flag doesn't get any redder as far as, is that a red flag? That's the first thing. The second thing is, it's for sure, for sure a porn addiction. If you're doing anything, despite clear negative consequences, it's an addiction. Doing it at work, risking your career. I mean, I don't understand how she found out. I don't know if somebody caught him or what, but I'm reminded when I was, this is, I can't tell you where, but I used to work at a place where somebody got fired because on their lunch break, they were going down the hall and they had a whole cache of, they had a whole group of computers with a huge cache of porn that they were going and watching every day at lunch. If I ever talked to you about this or not, oh. 12 years ago. But people do that, but, but just think about the drive to masturbate being that strong that you, you can't get through a work day. That is a significant addiction. It is definitely how he's coping with the stress and anxiety. And I would tell you, run for the hills from a, that's an obvious answer, right? Well, he's for sure not focused on work. I know. What is his just, seriously, <laughs> I hope he's not an air traffic controller. You know, you think you're getting the most out of your yeah. out of your employee Why on the clock? Sweaty. That is so gross. So okay, but here's why I think it's worth us talking about on the podcast <laughs> is I think this happens a lot, and I have seen it. I would tell you just most frequently, but not always. Most frequently with women, where they do this thing where there is egregious behavior on the part of their partner. And they rationalize the behavior. It's not that bad. They minimize their feelings in an effort to make their partner happy. Like there's this reluctance to ask for or demand what they want in a relationship. Like the idea of putting up with that, your, your partner comes home from work every day and you're certain that he's been watching porn all day. I mean, that go run an errand and you know he... Like the second the door locks is, you know, I mean, I think that it is... Um, a major red, major red flag, but it's a bigger red flag as far as her like level of codependency, her willing, her willingness to be so deferential to her partner's needs that she's considering maintaining the relationship with the guy that he should be. If you want to stay in the relationship with him, which I wouldn't, he should be in therapy right now. He should be going into SA right now. It should be a big deal. Yeah. All right, you want one more? Red flag. Get out. Do you want one more? Well, do you want one more? Yeah. These are fun, right? I just want like a softball. I thought that was you a softball. No, be like, that's not a softball. That is like so disturbing. <laughs> okay. And what's one that's not going to disturb me for forever? Um. Okay, ready? Yeah. This one, I'm not sure what you're going to think about this one. My friends have been insisting that my 23 year old female. Or, sorry, she's, I hate the way they, they word these things. She's a 23, the, the poster is 23 years old female. My relationship with another 24 year old female and a 24 year old male is abusive and I should leave. I am a 23 year old female. I'm in a polyamorous relationship with a 24 year old female and a 24 year old male. The female is my wife. The male is our boyfriend. My wife is pregnant with my boyfriend's child. I've always considered myself a lesbian and have never craved a male relationship. We met my boyfriend on Tinder and thought he would be a good match despite my reluctance to date men. Right? So, like, already she's bending her needs to make her partner happy. Right? That's, I, that is, like, the through line on all of these. My wife has a high sex drive. I am asexual. We have all talked about kids before, but not 
thorough discussions about parenting and childcare and all that. They started trying for a baby without me knowing and only found out because my boyfriend mentioned it to me. I told my wife I didn't know they were trying and she asked if that bothered me. Does that bother you if I'm trying to have a child with somebody else? I mean, yeah, it's kind of a big, de- it's kind of a big decision to make without me. But I know how badly she wants kids. She is now 15 week preg- weeks pregnant, and I'm not re- ready to be a parent. Every time I try to talk to her and say I'm not ready, she either doesn't respond or brushes it off. I don't want this. The boyfriend doesn't have a job and refuses to get one. I'm scared. I'm worried that me leaving would stress her out so bad that she might lose the baby, and I don't want that. Right, so there's this inordinate pressure she's putting on herself, right? I'm not ready to be a mom. I just want to live my life. I'm not being beat or or assaulted. So do I really have it that bad? I'm exhausted and my anxiety has been making me sick over all this. Please, any advice is helpful. Wow, this is so sad to me because like she clearly loved this has loved this person, bent over backwards, brought, like, an unemployed boyfriend into this situation for her partner. And it just seems so unhealthy to me because, like, the partner doesn't respect her, like, her, like, to me, the relationship is, is so off balance. Like, it's one person getting her needs met and the other one being ignored. Yeah. And um like I, I am not against polyamory. I'm I'm not against sister wives having sister wives or anything, but I what but in that situation, that is a disaster. Like how do you with your partner decide to have kids without them and expect that to be healthy and then brush her off, not not talk to her about her anxiety. And like, are they going to be supporting the boyfriend too? Because he's not clear, like he's clearly just getting his needs met and not, it's, that's also not a softball. It is also very disturbing. I don't know what to tell you. I feel like if this is not what you wanted, this is, this is between her and that guy, not you. Yeah. And um, you know what? It may stress her out, but like, I feel like she made those choices in a silo. The the partner. Yeah. My concern is that that baby. Oh my god, yeah. There's a part of me that 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 I I think I am I'm trying to think disturbed is the wrong word, but I am reluctant to I have a hard time appreciating these like alternative relationships. It's not that I think that they're necessarily bad. And there's a lot of research saying that open marriages and polyamory, all of that works and and the and the likelihood of the relationship staying together long term is the same as in a monogamous relationship. So there's not a there's no inherent problem in that way. Where that where I think there is an inherent problem is a relationship like this where you're entering into the relationship with different terms. Right. Yeah. She thinks she's getting into a monogamous relationship with her partner. Then her partner goes, I'd like to have, have a guy come in, even though you're not interested in it. Right. right. So like that's not polyamory. That's you compromising and letting your partner be with somebody else. Mm-hmm. And like to me, that's the that's the issue. And I feel like there's this subculture where people want to be so OK with all of these alternative relationships that it makes it really easy to have bendable rules. And that makes every puts everybody at risk for being hurt. And so for me, if I hear that, I think she is being, I understand that she's not being physically abused like she's saying, but she is absolutely being minimized. She's being mistreated. And having a child is a massive adjustment to her life that she doesn't want and has no, wasn't involved in the decision. Like that, wasn't I would it, say. Wasn't involved in the decision or the making of it. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, you're just putting this on someone. Yeah. That relationship is not polyamory. That relationship is your wife is having getting whatever she wants and you're not. That's what's happening. Yeah. So, I would I would exit that relationship. I would exit that. Yeah. I don't feel like she's taking care of you. Like a, a spouse should be taking care of you. Um Oh. That's a lot. So I, I feel like we need No softballs. We just need some normal 
That was fun. So next next time, let's do that again. Did you like that? Yeah. Are you going to post our answers on Reddit? Or like, how are those people going to know we answered them? I, th- I don't think they, I don't know how to do. Can you write in the feed that we answered them on our show so they know? Oh, I guess so. Yeah, tell them like we answered you. You could also post it on there. Yes, I could. It's <laughs> Well, I'm just saying we could both. I mean, I painted all the walls, crooked lines, but. All right, one of us will post on there. What do you mean mugging me for? I have so many thoughts right now. We have a birth- <laughs> we have a birthday party coming up and Allison has carried the brunt of the emotional burden. And the, and the tangible burden. So, uh, you know what? I'm going to post on. Okay. All right. Love- well, thank you. Thanks.